Well, it's really good to see you this morning on Wednesday, the 26th of May. I hope this finds you well. We're, we're remembering all sorts of people today and celebrating um, people. Uh, not least the very first Archbishop of Canterbury, um, Augustine, uh, who died in 605. Uh, and we'll be praying for his successor, uh, Justin Welby. Um, and um, we'll be praying, we'll be remembering also John Calvin, one of the great reformers from the 16th century, um, as well as uh, Philip Neri, um, founder of the Oratorians and Spiritual Guide, 16th century. Um, I know much less about him, um, but uh, obviously we can find out more um, should we wish to. Um, so plenty for us to be um, going on with, and we'll be hearing a passage from Psalm 119 and um, continuing our journey through Paul's letter to the Romans. So there's quite a lot for us to be um, thinking about today and praying for. So let's take a moment of stillness as we gather ourselves to pray to God. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes at the breast. <clears throat> you have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained. What are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out? You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea, O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. <clears throat> and so to our, our Psalm 119, which is actually the longest psalm um, in, uh, in the Bible, all of them, um, and um, it goes on for some 176 verses. Well, we're not going to read all 176 verses. Um, we have um, a chunk from the end, 153 onwards. So, uh, so fret not, we're not going to take the whole day doing this. However, we are going to hear the words of Psalm 119. Oh, consider my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. According to your promise, give me life. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your compassion, O Lord. Give me life according to your judgments. Many there are that persecute and oppress me, yet do I not swerve from your testimonies. It grieves me when I see the treacherous, for they do not keep your word. Consider, O Lord, how I love your commandments. Give me life according to your loving kindness. The sum of your word is truth, and all your righteous judgments endure for evermore. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I am as glad of your word as one who finds great spoils, but as for lies, I hate and abhor them. 
and your law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgments. Great peace have they who love your law, nothing shall make them stumble. Lord, I have looked for your salvation, and I have fulfilled your commandments. My soul has kept your testimonies, and greatly have I loved them. I have kept your commandments and testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips shall pour forth your praise when you have taught me your statutes. My tongue shall sing of your word, for all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand reach out to help me, for I have chosen your commandments. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let my soul live and it shall praise you, and let your judgments be my help. I have gone astray like a sheep that is lost. O oh, seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Well, we're going to miss out the Old Testament second reading, which is um, from Job. It's Job chapter 3. Um, so if you want to catch up on that, then um, obviously um, do do so. And we're going to move to our New Testament reading, which is uh, Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 2, verses 1 to 16. Paul writes this. Therefore, you have no excuse, whoever you are, when you judge others. For in passing judgment on another, you condemn yourself because you, the judge, are doing the very same things. You say we know that God's judgment on those who do such things is in accordance with truth. Do you imagine, whoever you are, that when you judge those who do such things and yet do them yourself, you will escape the judgment of God? Or do you despise the riches of his kindness and forbearance and patience? Do you not realise that God's kindness is meant to lead you? To repentance. But by your hard and impenitent heart, you are storing up with wrath for yourself on the day, storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath, when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. For he will repay according to each one's deeds, to those who by patiently doing good seek for glory and God and uh, glory and honor and immorality. No, immortality. Let's do that sentence again. For he will pay, I can't get it right this time. For he will repay according to each one's deeds. To those who by patiently doing good seek for glory and honour and immortality, he will give eternal life. While for those who are self-seeking and who obey not the truth but wickedness, there will be wrath and fury. There will be anguish and distress for everyone who does evil, the Jew first and also the Greek, but glory and honour and peace for everyone who does God, uh, does good, the Jew first and also the Greek, for God shows no impartiality. All who have sinned apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who have sinned under the law will be judged by the law. For it is not the hearers of the law who are righteous in God's sight, but the doers of the law who will be justified. When Gentiles who do not possess the law do instinctively what the law requires, these, though not having the law, are a law to themselves. They show that what the law requires is written on their hearts, to which their own conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts will accuse or perhaps excuse them on the day when, according to my gospel, God, through Jesus Christ, will judge the secret thoughts of all. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. 
you hold me by my right hand and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. So to the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah. <clears throat> I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So let's move into a time of prayer. I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Heavenly Father, today we remember Augustine, the first archbishop. We thank you for his shepherding, for his pioneering work in many ways, bringing the faith to these isles and Lord, we thank you for his example and his work, the seeds that he's sown for many centuries. We do continue to pray for Justin Welby, our current Archbishop of Canterbury, recognising the challenges and the pressures that he faces, but also in the knowledge that you equip your servants for service. So we pray that you would continue to do so, pour out upon him the same Holy Spirit that you poured at the first Pentecost. That he will continue to live and work to your praise and glory. We thank you for the work which he does publicly to speak out about injustice, about righteousness and against poverty and greed. Lord, we pray that you would continue to inspire in him and throughout the whole church a voice for justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our own churches here in the benefice, St John's Staple Grove and All Saints Norton Fitzwarren. Lord, we thank you for the buildings that we have in different but important locations. We thank you for the connections that we have with our respective communities. We pray that you would continue to help us grow through the strength of your Holy Spirit leading us. We pray for the Bible course that we have coming up soon that you will release in people's hearts and lives the ability to participate and that that will be a real source of growth for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we're asked today to pray for social services, recognising the immense good that they do in so many people's lives not least, of course, dealing with broken relationships, 
broken families, broken lives. So Lord, we pray for all social services within our own town, support agencies and organisations. Again, that you will equip and empower them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We're asked to pray for those who work in the criminal justice system. Again, not always an easy place to work, I would imagine. Lord, we thank you for the work that so many people do to strive for justice and peace. So we pray for your protection upon people in our courts. And we pray for wisdom for those who have to make difficult decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for victims and perpetrators of crime, recognising the many challenges our society faces. Lord, we pray for our police force, police service. Once again, dealing with difficult situations. Lord, we do pray for the police service across our own county of Somerset and ask that you will protect and guide them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as always, we bring before you those known to us who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Pray for those we know who are ill, perhaps those we know who are especially vulnerable, lonely or anxious. Pour out upon them, we pray, the healing oil of your mercy. Lord, we pray too for those who grieve, the friends and family of Martin Vesey, and of Bert. Lord, we pray through your Holy Spirit that you would grant them strength. We pray that their respective funerals will be opportunities to remember and celebrate, but also to join together in grief and support the friends and families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do pray for the day ahead. Thank you for the meeting today of the Ethos Committee at Norton School. Albeit continuing to meet uh, through virtual means, but uh, we do lift that meeting to you, Lord, and ask that your Holy Spirit will lead and guide us as we seek to support the school. Lord, we pray for the plans that we have for the rest of the day and ask that your Holy Spirit will lead us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So to our collect for today. Almighty God, whose servant Augustine was sent as the apostle of the English people, grants that as he laboured in the spirit to preach Christ's gospel in this land, so all who hear the good news may strive to make your truth known in the world through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as Jesus himself has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 
So the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Really good to have you joining me this morning. I hope you have a good day. Um, I mentioned the Bible course. There is still plenty of room to join that. We have um, a good number of people actually joining us, um, but there is still um, space. So if that's something that you'd like to be part of, um, do contact me um, and um, we can arrange that. I hope to catch up with you soon. Go well. <laughs>